The Sega Nomad has been a handheld portable console that's always seemed to elude me ever since I first discovered its existence in the early 2000s. Like many other gamers in my generation, a lot of Sega consoles seem to go under the radar. That is, until we were old enough to harness the internet and discover many consoles that we otherwise would never have found. For me personally, the Sega Genesis was the first console I ever laid my hands on, and being that young in the late 90s, uh, the next Sega console I ever remember was the Sega Dreamcast, which launched in 1999. As a hardcore Sega fan, I really wish that they marketed themselves better after the Genesis. During the late 90s, we had an original PlayStation in my house. Final Fantasy VIII and Legend of Dragoon captivated me on an emotional level. 3D graphics were finally becoming a thing, and at that point I'd never really seen anything like that before. Games took on a new persona, and the future of what gaming would be like fascinated me, even at that young age. Fast forward to October the 20th, 2016, Nintendo announced that their next generation console would be a new kind of portable device. The previous line of Game Boys and DS handhelds had proven a massive success for them in the past, and Nintendo revolutionized the way we game more often than not. It was no surprise to learn that they were combining handheld gaming and console gaming into one giant package. But this wasn't exactly the first time a video game developer utilized such a brilliant idea. Let's go back in time 21 years before the Nintendo Switch and meet the Switch before the Switch. I'm Travis Bowman, and this is the Sega Genesis Nomad. Only released in North America in 1995 due to the overwhelming popularity of the Genesis this side of the pond, the Nomad was the second and last portable handheld console released by Sega. Well, if you aren't counting the Mega Jet, which was a portable Genesis minus the screen, designed for rich folks to play on airplanes or even on the go in the car. Let's take a look at the design itself. With the release of Street Fighter II on the Genesis, Sega had to redesign their three-button controller to accommodate the extra buttons needed in the game, and the six-button Genesis controller is often referred to as one of the best 2D pads ever made. ABC on bottom, XYZ on top, simple and effective. No diamond-shaped mess and shoulder buttons to deal with. Sega included a mode button on the top right of the controller, and this was mainly used to switch between 3-button and 6-button modes, as some older games required the use of a 3-button controller. The Nomad transitioned the 6-button pad into handheld form quite beautifully, actually. The handheld is surprisingly comfortable to hold, and I've had no issues using it as a Player 1 controller. On this handheld, there is a Player 2. There's a controller port on the bottom of the console. There's a controller port on the bottom of the console. There's a controller port on the bottom of the console. Even on the go, you could hook up a controller and play Street Fighter with a friend. Do I need to remind you that this is in 1995? There's a volume knob and a brightness knob on the device as well. While not exactly the best portable gaming experience, with its incredible, ridiculous short battery life at only two to three hours on six double A's, and a screen that wasn't exactly the best quality even at that time. But of course, double A batteries weren't the only way to power the handheld. A car charger and an AC adapter was also an option. As far as EverDrives, the Nomad is completely compatible with it. If you didn't know, an EverDrive is a modified cartridge designed to house an SD card, allowing you to fit every single game in the Genesis library onto one cartridge. This of course is designed to be played on a real Sega Genesis, and if you own a 32X, you can load 32X games on it as well. The Genesis was even designed to play Master System games with the assistance of a power base converter, but that piece of hardware can also be thought of as uh, kind of an adapter. The Genesis had the ability to play Master System games built into it, but you can't fit a Master System game into the cartridge slot. It just won't work. Hence, the reason for the power base converter. However, you can't use the EverDrive to play Master System games on the Nomad, and although you can physically plug in the 32X, it's not compatible with the Nomad. The only thing you can use the Genesis EverDrive for on the Nomad is to play Genesis games. Still, not a bad addition for a portable handheld, right? 
Now let's take a look at what this thing can do. Obviously, it plays Sega Genesis games, that much is clear, but what some folks might not realize is where it can play Sega Genesis games. I'm currently playing the Nomad, but you're viewing it on the Nomad screen and my Sony Trinitron CRT at the exact same time. And just like the Nintendo Switch, you can pause the game and take it with you on the go, granted that you have the batteries to spare to make it a few hours. Now, recently there have been a few modifications for the Sega Nomad, and some folks might say that it's a little bit too excessive, and others might say that it's actually a good thing, bringing the Nomad into the modern era. But what do you think? A gentleman with the username BillyBob884 via the WRLabs.com website posted an in-depth guide on how to mod your Nomad with two lithium batteries to change that AA battery life of two hours to an internal rechargeable battery life of about five hours, which is actually a massive improvement. Instead of plugging your console in to give it life and having to be at the mercy of the length of your adapter cable, now you only plug it in to recharge it, much like a Nintendo 3DS. This is just one example of many different mods for this system. I'm sure you've noticed even through my camera lens that despite the fact that it's backlit, the original screen on the Nomad is a bit washed out and blurry especially when you play games with a lot of movement. There have been multiple guides on how to correct this with a brand new screen, however. You can actually take a small LCD screen that was designed to be installed as a backup camera for vehicles, and with some soldering, swap out the terrible original screen and get rid of that awful washed out visual once and for all. Now, I mentioned previously that this console has always seemed to elude me. Meaning after, in the early 2000s, when I learned that it existed, I could never seem to find one. Now, this is my Sega Nomad. And to this day, it's only the second one I've ever seen in person. I remember visiting a store called Game Exchange in about 2003 and seeing one in the display case. I don't remember exactly how much they were asking, but I do remember that it was a lot of money for me at that time. Okay, so not everyone is going to have a CRT television in their house anymore these days, and that's perfectly understandable. Even with something as old as the Nomad, that's not a problem. Have you ever heard of a little thing called RGB SCART? Folks my age and older probably remember composite inputs, meaning the little RCA, red, white, and yellow cables. The Genesis used this cable back in the day, and it's possible to use it on the Nomad as well. Just make sure you have a Model 2 Genesis cable. The Model 1 cable isn't going to fit. Over in Europe, TVs had inputs on their televisions called SCART, and it looks like this. While I don't know why we never got this type of connection over here in America, you'll see why it's necessary for me to discuss it in this video in just a second. RGB is the best possible picture quality that most retro consoles could possibly achieve. Today we use HDMI for just about anything you can imagine, but in the 90s, in America, Composite video quality was just about the most common, S-Video probably being the best at that time. Despite the fact that the Genesis was used in composite in America, it was capable of sending out an RGB signal. Even the Sega Master System in 1987 was capable of an RGB video output. But what about the Nomad? Yes indeed, the Nomad is capable of RGB output as well. Thank you, Sega. Now the question is, how do we get the best possible quality out of our Genesis slash Nomad when we don't have this type of connection on our televisions? The answer is quite simple. Converters. Now this could go so much deeper than I'm really wanting to go for this video, but to keep it simple, I'm using a super cheap SCART to HDMI converter for this project. More accurate converters exist at a much higher and ridiculous price point, but for the untrained eye, this cheap converter box will do just fine and possibly even blow you away with how good it looks. I got this particular box via Amazon for about 30 bucks, and it requires its own power supply. That might be a drag, but for what you get, it's worth it. To refresh your memory, this is what a Genesis slash Nomad looks like outputting video and composite signal. It doesn't look bad, right? It's acceptable. Now check out this footage. What you're seeing is the Sega Genesis Nomad outputting in glorious RGB, no mods, nothing really that crazy or fancy. The Genesis and Nomad naturally output this kind of quality, and the SCART to HDMI converter allows us to utilize that here, at home, in the United States. 
These consoles were designed this way, and you could do this in 1995, granted if you flew to Europe and asked to borrow someone's SCART-capable television. Here's a few more comparisons of some random Genesis games in composite and RGB. Today, it really might not be that impressive, and all of this might seem a little much, but to be honest, I kind of love it. The Nomad is a piece of gaming history, and I'm really excited to finally own one. And obviously not as impressive as the Switch, you've got to admit that the Nomad was actually pretty cool for its time. Sega might not always have been the greatest and smartest and most practical, but damn, you've really got to admire their passion and creativity. I hope this video really gave you a better idea of what the Sega Nomad is and what it can do, and I hope if you're looking for one, you find one at a decent price. So what do you think about the Nomad? Did you ever own one? Have you ever even seen one before? Let me know the answers to all those questions in the comments section below. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, I really appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing, and on that note, I'll see you at the next one.